Hello again. This is Math 2232 coming to you from the College of Page, and the title of this lecture is Derivatives and Tangents of Parametric Equations. As always, be attentive while watching this video. By way of introduction, in this lecture, we will discuss how to find the first and second derivatives for parametric curves. Now note that these first and second derivatives that we're talking about here are the derivative of y with respect to x and the second derivative of y with respect to x. The derivatives are with respect to x in this uh, lecture. We will also discuss using these derivative formulas to find tangent lines for parametric curves, as well as determining where a parametric curve is increasing or decreasing, and address the concavity, where it is concave up or concave down. We want to find the tangent lines to the parametric equations given by x equals f of t and y equals g of t. Recall how to find the tangent line to y equal capital F and x at the point x equal a. Now here the tangent line is given by y minus the y coordinate evaluated at a is equal to m, the slope, times x minus a. So this is uh, y is equal to f at a plus the slope times the whole of x minus a. And the slope is the derivative, this is dy dx in the xy plane, evaluated at x equal a, and in this notation we'll call this f prime at a. Notice that if we could figure out how to get the derivative dy dx from the parametric equations, we could simply reuse this formula since we will be able to use the parametric equations to find the x and y coordinates at the point. So, just for a second, let's suppose we were able to determine um, such, and we were able to eliminate the parameter from the parametric form, as we did earlier, and write the parametric equations in the form y equals capital F of x. Now plug the parametric equations in for x and y. Yes, it seems a little silly to eliminate the parameter and then immediately put it back, that's what we need to do in order to get our hands on the derivative. So if we do that, then we say that y, which is g of x, is equal to capital F, there's capital F, of x, and x was f of t, uh, lowercase f of t. Now if we take the derivative, this is the chain rule. So g prime of t is equal to f prime, capital F prime, uh, evaluated at f of t times uh, lowercase f prime at t. Now hold that thought, but this is just the chain rule. And this again is what we had. But now let's do a change in notation. We need to be careful with our derivatives here. So you see g prime at t, that's the derivative with respect to t. That is, in fact, dy dt. And f, capital F prime at f of t is really f prime of x, and that was capital F prime of x, and lowercase, and because this f of t is x, and f prime at t is going to be the derivative of x with respect to t. Now, if dx dt is not equal to 0, I could divide both sides by dx dt, and so that gives me that capital F prime of x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to t divided by the derivative of x with respect to t. But f prime of x, capital F prime of x is dy dx. That means we've really proven this theorem, and this is the formula you want to commit to memory because you'll be using it. dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. 
And again, dx dt cannot equal zero because we're dividing by it. Now, when I do this theorem in class, I often prove it in a shorter way, but you have to be very familiar with the chain rule. Alternatively, alternatively dy dx is equal to dy dt times dt dx. And when I remind ourselves, again from Calc 1, that dt dx is equal to 1 over dx dt. I hope you followed that, but whether you did or not, remember this formula because you're going to be applying it. So please write this down. And you should notice that this was the function of t and not x. And watch the examples and you'll see this. As an aside, notice we also could get the following formula with a similar derivation if we needed to, and this would be dx dy is equal to dx dt over dy dt provided that dy dt does not equal zero. Now you might be pondering, why do we need to have this? Well, recall perhaps, in, in fact, recall that perhaps in the Arkling section, uh, we talked about that, oh, there are forms where we need this derivative. So anyway, let's find a tangent line. This is our first example. Find the tangent line and notice that it says plural, we'll see about that, to the parametric curve given by x of t is equal to x to the fifth minus 4x cubed, y of t is equal to t squared, and we want to evaluate this at the point x, y is equal to 0, 4. So this is x is 0 and y is 4. You should know what to do. Let's see how you did. All right, well, here's our formula, dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. Now, x is equal to x to the fifth minus 4x cubed. So when I take the derivative of uh, that, I'm going to get um, 5t to the fourth minus 12 t squared, which is the denominator here, and that is the dx dt. dy dt is 2t. So you see I have dy dt over dx dt, and I simplify this by canceling a t from the numerator and denominator, and I get 2 over 5t cubed minus 12t. So this is dy dx in terms of t. Now, the derivative is in terms of t, and all we got are the xy coordinate pair to use for our tangent line. So the next step is to determine the values of t, which will give this point. So we're going to go back to our original equations up here. And if I want uh, x to be 0, uh, and that will factor, so I'm putting 0 equal to the equation for x, and that means that t is equal to 0 or plus or minus 2. There are three possibilities here. But it also has to be that this other one simultaneously is 4 for that value of t. And so that means that t is plus or minus 2. Both these conditions must be satisfied. So the answer is t is equal to plus or minus 2. Now, when t is equal to minus 2, we're going to plug that into this equation to get what dy dx is evaluated for t equal minus 2. And if you plug it in there and check, you get minus 1 8. So since we know that, I say y minus the y coordinate, that's y minus 4, is equal to slope times, uh, in parentheses, x minus 0. You simplify it and you get that y is equal to 4 minus 1 over 8x. Make sure you follow these calculations. At t equal 2, again, we're going to substitute t equal 2 into this equation over here, and we'll get this time 1 over 8. And so then when we uh, use 0, 4, we get y minus 4 is equal to now it is 1 over 8x. Now, before we leave this, we really want to say, hey, how could we possibly have two tangents at the same point? This definitely was not possible back in calculus 1 when we ran across calculus lines, but we were taking the derivatives of functions then. This is not a function because it doesn't satisfy the, at least uh, y, y is in, because it doesn't satisfy the horizontal line test. But if we graph it, this is what our original equation up here, the parametric equation, looks like. It's coming along like this. It loops and it crosses back over itself and goes this way. So you see 
the parametric curve crosses itself. This explains how there can be more than one tangent line. There's one tangent line for each instance that the curve goes through that point. Now, the next topic uh, that we need uh, to discuss in this section is that of horizontal and vertical tangents. We can easily identify where these will occur, or at least the t's that will give them, by looking at the derivative formula. And recall that our derivative formula was dx or dy dx is equal to dy dt over dx dt, provided that didn't equal to zero. Now, horizontal tangents will occur when the derivative is zero. They are horizontal. The slope is zero. That means that the numerator has to be zero and the denominator isn't. Said another way, a horizontal tangent happens when dy dt is equal to zero, provided that dx dt does not. Now, a vertical tangent uh, will happen when the derivative is not defined, and that means the denominator is zero. So we'll get vertical tangents at values of t for which we have dx dt is equal to zero, provided that dy dt does not equal zero. Uh, some students will want to call this uh, slope infinite, but it is undefined. And recall that 0 over 0 is truly not defined, so you can't use this when they're both at 0. But this gives you the horizontal tangent, and this gives you the vertical tangent. Again, commit these to memory, and let's look at this example. Determine the xy coordinates for the points where the following parametric equations will have horizontal or vertical tangents. And this time, uh, x is equal to t cubed minus 3t, and y is equal to 3t squared minus 9. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. So we're going to uh, take the derivative dx dt. So we take the derivative of that. That's going to be 3t squared minus 3. And I am going to set this equal to 0, so I might as well factor it. And if I completely factor it, uh, what will happen is um, you'll get uh, 3. This is t plus 1 and t minus 1. The derivative dy dt is going to be 6t. So we'll have a horizontal tangent whenever dy dt is equal to 0. If you set 6t equal to 0, we get t equal to 0. And that means we will be substituting in uh, up here t to be 0. That's where the ta horizontal tangent uh, will be 0. And so we plug it in and we get 0 uh, minus 9. So that's where the tangent is equal to 0. And you can see if we were to graph this, that happens here nicely. For vertical tangents, we need to solve the dx dt is equal to 0. And as we said, this is going to be t at plus or minus 1. So you see there's a vertical tangent here and there's a vertical tangent here. So the two vertical tangents will occur, and I'll take plus or minus 1. I will substitute into these two equations, and I will get either get 2 minus 6 or minus 2 minus 6. And you saw the picture already. Now the final topic we need to discuss in this uh, lecture uh, isn't really about tangent lines, but it does fit nicely with the derivation of the derivatives that we needed to find the slope of the tangent line. We're going to actually calculate the second derivative. Now, how do we find the derivative with respect to x? Well, the derivative with respect to x of something, and I'm calling it y here, uh, I might call it z actually uh, if I were doing it differently, is you take the derivative with respect to t of whatever that function is divided by dx dt. So uh, what happens is now I want to take this one is going to be the derivative. Uh, in fact, maybe I should cover this up. I don't know. But the derivative with respect to x of the derivative is going to be the derivative with respect to t of dy dx divided by dx dt. So you see, I'm really applying my first derivative formula but I'm applying it to the first derivative to get the second derivative. So committing to memory again, the derivative, uh, the second derivative of y with respect to x is d, the derivative with respect to t of 
dy dx divided by dx dt again. Now it's important to note that the second derivative does not equal to the quotient of the second derivatives. This is something different. And again, this is another one you want to commit to memory. I'm also going to tell you that this is something that students often do not get right. So I uh, encourage you to pay attention to, uh, to this. OK. Let's apply that. So I'm asking you now to find the second derivative for the following set of parametric equations. x is equal to t to the fifth minus 4t cubed, and y is equal to t squared. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. All right, let's find the second derivative then. Now, we will need in our calculations the derivative of y with respect to t. So y is here, so that is going to be 2t. We also will need dx dt, and that is going to be 5t to the fourth minus uh, 12t squared. And we know that then dy dx, and I think we actually did this earlier, is the quotient of those. You'll cancel out the common factor of t, and you get that this is 2 over 5t cubed minus 12t. I think we did that actually earlier. Now what we need to do is we need to take this as our function, and we're going to take the derivative, but this is a parametric function. So the uh, derivative with respect to t of the derivative of y with respect to x is, this is going to be 2u to the minus 1. So it is minus 2 over u squared times the derivative of u with respect to t. So that is 15t squared minus 12. Make sure you follow these calculations. And I simplify that, and I get this expression. Now this is the derivative with respect to t of the function that we're taking the derivative of to get the second derivative. Think about this carefully, please. So this is the derivative with respect to t of dy dx, it's this here. And I have to divide it again by the derivative of x with respect to t, which is this. Now notice that um, this is a similar factor. Actually, I can factor out a t, and then I have the same factor. I have to factor a, a t out of here, but then it will match, so I factor a t out of it. And I do the uh, algebra correctly, and I get this expression. So this is the second derivative. And notice again, it is a function of t. Now, uh, let's go back to our calculus one days. And what we want to do is determine the value of t for which the parametric curve, given by the following sets of parametric equations, is concave up and concave down. Again, x of t is 1 minus t squared. y of t is t to the 7th plus t to the 5th. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. So we need to find the second derivative. So again, what we're going to do is we'll find dy d uh, t. And here is y, so that is going to be 7t to the 6th um, plus 5t to the 4th. And dx dt is just going to be minus 2t. But dy dx, the first derivative, is going to be dy dt divided by dx dt. And if you simplify it, you get this. But now remember... Uh, that this says dy dx is, uh, is this, and so we can actually use this to figure out if it's increasing or decreasing. And uh, when we look at this, uh, if the dy dx is bigger than zero, then it is increasing. And if we check this inequality, we see that this parametric curve is increasing uh, for t less than zero, and it is decreasing for t greater than zero. But now let's go to the second derivative. 
Now again, I'm taking the derivative again of um, uh, this one, okay? So I'm going to take the derivative of that with respect to t. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to t, the minus 1 half sits there. And I take the derivative of this and I get 35t to the fourth plus 15t squared. And again, I divide it by dx dt. And I simplify it and I get this. This is 1 fourth 35t cubed plus 15t. Now notice that this is an odd function. And so that helps us understand that if t is um, less than uh, 0, then this will be negative. So that means it's concave down. And if it's um, if t is greater than 0, uh, the second derivative is going to be uh, positive, And that means it's concave up. So the parametric curve will be concave down for t less than 0 and concave up for t greater than 0. And here is the picture. You see it starts here. It is concave down for t less than 0. And then it is concave up for t greater than 0. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. May God bless you all.